listen, y'all. By the end of this podcast, um, hopefully my voice is better. By the more, maybe the Holy maybe Spirit, the Holy Spirit yeah, can heal we'll me. Hope, but yeah, yeah. Welcome to season three. Three. Yeah. Oh my God. Can you believe we're in season three already? Oh my goodness, that is insane. I don't know. I feel season like we started like three, yesterday. Bro. bro, season three. We did it. I, I love you, Jesus. <laughs> nah, like I literally cannot believe that we're in season three, and I'm so glad that we started this, bro. Because as you guys know, it was peer pressuring her to start this podcast, and she and didn't then, want to start the podcast. And then I was peer pressuring you. Yep. And then we came into agreement. Nah, you weren't peer pressuring. All me. right. Nah, I was. Uh, this is a I was, oh, I'm ready in and out of season. Okay. Okay. She wasn't ready. In All and out. right. Uh, yep. All yep. right. Truth comes out. No, but honestly, um, praise God for this new season. Welcome to this new season. If you're new here, my name is Imano. My name is Melody. And we are siblings. Uh, we're siblings. That's it. Say it again. We're siblings. Thank you. And we're, you know, we're siblings. <laughs> <laughs> we love Jesus, and that's what this podcast is about. Forgive me for my voice. I don't usually sound like this, but um, I kind of lost my voice because of her. Okay. All right. Can we start there before we start the introduction and whatever? So basically, we were in LA and she was sick and she got me sick and I lost my voice. Like I got worse. Like she was sick. Look at her. Can you? Can you do that? Yeah, like she could breathe. I can't. Okay. I struggle. So no, but can I, I say lost the my truth? Voice. I can say the truth. You can say you're, the truth. Like lying is not. I'm lying. It's not, yeah, that's actually bad. Did I not get sick by you? You gotta ask me for again. Did I not get sick by you? Um, your angel brought that down. So the reason why okay. he got sick is because I was like, dang, before we went to LA, I was like, dang, <clears> Imano, <throat> I'm sick. Like, I feel so bad. You know what he said? He was like, oh, I don't get sick. I, that's true. And then look at him now. Nah, but you, Literally, like, God was like, oh, you don't? No, no, no. Let me humble you. You know what happened in Titanic? No, 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 no. The guy was like, not even God can that's sink a this chip. That's a myth. And then the, the chip stuck. That's a myth. People just love bringing stuff up like that. How do they know what happened in Titanic if he's dead? Because that was a saying that impacted many people. They're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, you might not. Sorry. The old lady survived, no? Okay. All right. The truth is this, okay? I haven't gotten sick in two years. It's been a long time since I got sick. And so, um, you know, going to LA, it was raining. Um, we were it eating was as, pouring. It was pouring. Um, I wasn't eating as well. I wasn't going to the gym. And usually I have a little a little routine going on that I was off my routine. So my body's obviously going to react to the circumstances that I'm in. And it did just that, you know, but I'm already healed in Jesus name because I speak life, not death. Okay. Okay. Amen. Um, so yeah, guys, welcome back to heavenly bond. Oh, see, I think something happened. Bond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> heavenly bond. <laughs> Stop, bro. Stop. Don't do that. I don't feel bad anymore. That okay. was so bad. All right. Yeah, season three, <laughs> we're starting it off with a banger. We're starting it off glorifying our God. We have a lot of exciting episodes um, this season. So many new things that you guys are going to be like, oh, they're switching it up. Yeah. They're switching it up. We have some guests. Which, yeah, we do. We do. And um, that's going to be cool. That's going to be something new that we're incorporating in the podcast. Uh, but we're starting it off with a banger, Okay. And we're going to start it off talking about the one and only, the gift that was given to us. Um, that I promise you, you wouldn't be able to walk this walk without it, mm -hmm. which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we want to tap into the Holy Spirit and let you guys know um, what it is to have the Holy Spirit, to walk with the Holy Spirit, um, who the Holy Spirit is, so you can get an understanding and utilize him in the right way. Okay? I know. Utilize him in the right way. Yeah. I mean, you don't utilize the <laughs> Spirit. <laughs> You let the spirit use you. Amen. Mm, okay. So okay. I feel like as believers, like we have such an amazing gift. Yeah. And literally the Holy Spirit is meant to help us navigate through this life. And mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes we forget. And I don't know what it is, but I feel like in this season of my life, I've been reminded of how amazing the Holy Spirit is because I feel like I've been in so many situations where I really needed a reminder of the word. Amen. I needed comfort. I needed to be covered in peace. And yes. that's what the Holy Spirit does. And listen, if you're new in the, in the faith and you heard about the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. you might be like, wait a minute. This is yeah, scary. Because yeah. at first I was like, the Holy Ghost? Like you get, Ghost? You, you, get, get ghost? You, you get a ghost inside <laughs> of you? Wait. That's what nah. a lot of people think. You know? So it's not like that. It's actually so beautiful <laughs> to have the Holy Spirit. 
And I want us to talk about it yeah, yeah. and kind of develop it. And I want you guys to open your Bibles. Literally, if you guys are watching this, go get your Bibles, mm-hmm. open it, um, so we can all like be in tune because we wanted to make sure that the first video is like a study. We want us to yeah. to be again inspired in the word, to Amen. dive in the word and kind of like get filled with the Holy Spirit Amen. and encouragement. Um, so I really hope this video encourages you guys. Yeah, yeah. We wanted to make sure that, although we have a lot of fun topics, we just wanted to make sure that this video was a, a, a foundation mm-hmm. to receive what you needed to receive. So I feel um, like we can go back to like the beginning where in the Gospels we see how Jesus' life was and we can mm-hmm. see how he was modeling it and we can see how much the disciples loved Jesus, right? Yes. Like they were so in love with God. They were listening to him. He was um, giving... Um, he was discipling them and he mm-hmm. was talking to them and teaching them, right? He was a teacher. And in a moment, we read in the Gospels that the moment where he's going to get crucified is coming and it's close. Yeah. And he's like gathering his disciples. Yeah. And in a moment, he tells them, I don't want you guys to be afraid yes. because I'm going to go away soon. Mm-hmm. But don't be afraid because something better oh is coming. Amen. And I wonder what they were thinking in that moment. Like, think about you hanging out with, like, your best friend. Yeah. And he's like, yo, I'm going to die. But don't worry. Something better is coming. You're like, be like, what's better than you? <laughs> exactly. Like, Pretty what much. is better than you? Like, God, I want you to stay. Yeah, okay? literally. Um, but God <clears throat> said, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit, the helper, is going to come yes. after the Lord leaves the earth. And what's beautiful about the Holy Spirit is that when Jesus was on this earth, mm-hmm. everything that he was doing, his ministry, was on foot. Yeah. So he was traveling a lot. So people didn't have access to him all the time. They didn't. Right? Because like he was here and yep. then you were here. So there was like a, a problem there. People were following him. But imagine if Jesus was here and he was right now like in Europe and we're in PA. Right. Like we want to be with him, right? Exactly. So he says that the Holy Spirit is better because we can have access to the Holy Spirit anywhere, anytime, anytime no matter what. Bro. And that is such a blessing and such an encouragement. Yeah, literally. Like, I think um, it was it's so funny you say that because <clears throat> I was in prayer yesterday. And, um, bro, like, I was bawling my eyes out. And plus, I'm sick, so it was like boogers everywhere. <laughs> I don't want to give you that image. But I was in the deep, <laughs> I got the image. deep place. I was in the secret place. And I, I got a boost of just gratitude. And I'm like, God, like, I can do this right now. There are people that would do anything back then to oh, just man. be able to feel you in any time, in any place. And I'm able to do this at any moment. I'm in my home right now, in the comfort of my home, with worship music on, just worshiping you. And have access. And have access to you. Oh. And I can feel you. And you're here mm. in this place. And bro, I just started crying even more. Because I'm like, God, like I'm so grateful because of that. Because that is such a luxury. That is such a luxury that a lot of Christians are not using in their advantage. Because God is giving us... Everything we need in our hands is up to us to receive it. Mm. And the gift of the Holy Spirit is such a blessing. It's such a blessing. And I want all of you to understand that this is something that we need to desire. And if you're a newborn believer, you want to desire to feel the Holy Spirit. You want to desire to walk with the Holy Spirit because there's a quenching of the Holy Spirit. As a Christian, you can be walking with God for a certain amount of time and you can quench the Holy Spirit. And you no longer have conviction. You no longer hear God. You suppress. No longer, yes, you suppress it. And so you're not walking with the Holy Spirit. You're walking with your flesh. Mm-hmm. And if you're in that position, I promise you, you need to revive the Holy Spirit in you because that's the only Spirit that's going to lead you to all truth. The Amen. Bible says here in um, John, <clears throat> it says... Um, in John, what is it? It's John 14, 26. It says, uh, 25, 26, the things that I have spoken to you while remaining with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, mm. he will teach you all things and remind you of all that I said to you. Oh. Peace I live with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives you, do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor be fearful. You heard that I said, I'm going away and I'm coming to you. If you loved me, you would have you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father and the Father is greater than I. So Jesus was saying, I'm leaving a comforter. I'm mm. leaving a helper. I'm leaving someone that you can access to at all times. Like you said, you can't access me at all times because I could be in different places preaching the gospel. But the Holy Spirit is going to be in you. And at all times, any place you're at, you can access oh, wow. him. How luxury is that? How, how, how much of a blessing that is that we can go. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will lead us to all truth. 
So when we have the Holy Spirit, no matter what situation we're in, no matter what circumstances we're in, it will lead us to the right direction if we let it. Like you said, don't use the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit use you. So basically, whatever the Holy Spirit wants you to do, you have to submit to it for it to guide you in that direction because mm -hmm. sometimes we want to do what we want to do. Oh, yeah. We want to access Ooh. what we want to access. We want to go places that we want to go to. And the Holy Spirit is telling us no. And when hmm. we turn away from that conviction... Mm -hmm. When we look away, we're no longer listening to the Holy Spirit. We're suppressing the Holy Spirit. You know what that's called in the Bible? <coughs> Walking in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Walking in the flesh. It and is. if we go to Galatians 5, all of you guys flip to your Bibles. <laughs> it's Bible study. Amen. So Galatians 5, we're going to read in verse 16. It's the Spirit versus the flesh. I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. Come on. For the flesh desires what is against the spirit, Come on. and the spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you don't do what you want. Come on. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Oh, my goodness. Now, <clears throat> the works of the flesh are obvious. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing. This is going to be so good. If you meet someone, you know what the Bible says? You will know them by their fruits. Come on. And it is very evident when someone is walking by the Spirit. It's very evident when the Holy Spirit is residing in that person because their fruits mm -hmm. speak for them. Yes. So now, we're going to pretty much review mm -hmm. how a person acts if they are in the flesh. Because these things are obvious based on the Bible. Come on. Sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscu promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, Hatred, strife, <coughs> jealousy, outbursts of anger, Oof. selfish ambitions, yep. um, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, kerosene, and anything similar. So if anything, anything similar. similar to that, it is the flesh. Because some people will be like, oh, oh what I'm dealing with is not there. <laughs> like, I'm smoking, so it's not there. I'm it's good. Not, it's, like, it's not in the list. It's similar. It's not in the okay? list. Like, it's similar. We got you there, buddy. Yeah. So anything similar, I am warning you about these things. Come on. As I warned you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the, the kingdom, kingdom of, of God. God. Okay, can you stop right there? Woo. That last that last line you, you read, those who practice, okay? Those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And that includes believers. Yes. That includes believers. Don't think mm -hmm. you're exempt because now you you we ain't exempt. You're a pastor's daughter, or you know you're, you're a PK. Black, you're a PK, or this, that, and the third, and you've been walking with God for X amount of years, but you're practicing sin. You're not exempt because what it is is this: when you practice something, you're becoming better at it, and you're doing it in a consistent manner. When you're in a basketball team, you practice every week to get better at that sport. Practicing is something that you do consistently to increase your your abilities to do it. Mm. That's what practicing is. Another thing, sorry to cut you off. Practicing is doing things consciously. Consciously. It's premeditated. Yes. You're premeditating your sins. You pretty much are saying, I'm aware that I'm envious about this person, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go ahead and gossip about this person. Come on. Instead of stopping it right there and tapping into the Holy Spirit, like, Holy Spirit, check me. Yes. Holy Spirit, convict me. Holy Spirit, renew me. Because this is not from you. Yes. And the Bible says that he will always give you a way out mm -hmm. of every situation that you're in. And so when you're in the situation of practicing sin, you're willingly doing it. And the Bible says that there remains no more sacrifice for those who practice mm. sin, who do it willingly. Right. It is difference between you struggling with something, you struggling with a sin, and you practicing it, doing it consciously, like you said. Because when you fall into sin, it's a difference because you're doing it out of the nature of your of your flesh. Mm. You know, we are going to have this flesh until we leave earth. It, uh, Apostle said that I hate that I do the things that I hate and I hate the things that I that I love. Basically saying that I'm fighting with my flesh constantly. Mm -hmm. Whatever I'm feeling in my flesh, I usually act upon it and I hate that. And I wish that I can do the right things, but my flesh drives me to do another things. It's an ongoing battle. And so when you're battling with sin, when you're struggling, when you're battling, you're tussling, it's a different it's a different way than you practicing it consistently because that's what we need to understand, that some of us are doing things consciously, knowing it's wrong, and we're not looking a way for us to stop doing it. 
Yeah. We're not in our face crying to God, saying, God, take this away from me. Take the desire away from me. Let the Holy Spirit be so amplified in my life that this is not a battle that That's I'm good. dealing with. You know, Christians are not meant to be bound. The Bible says that we're freed indeed through Christ. And so if you're bounded to sin, that means that there's something in your end that you're not doing or you're not submitting mm. to God. And that's why you're still in bondage. Dude, preach. That's why you're still in bondage. That's good. Because like, I can say that something happened to me um, recently where I was caught in fear. And usually when you think about fear and doubt, that is a pl pretty clear explanation that you are not trusting in the Lord with Amen. something, Amen. right? Like God tells us, do not be afraid so many times so in the Bible. Times, yep. So we're not meant to walk in fear. So when I was experiencing fear recently, I um, went to my friend. Mm -hmm. She is like a, a, a follower of the Lord, which is important. And she was reminding me of the word. And she was literally telling me like, listen, God says this about this and this is about that. And I was like, wow, Lord, thank you so much for community because a lot of the times like we can get caught up in our flesh, right? We can get caught up in things that happen in our lives. And sometimes it is so important to have someone that's going to speak life Come on. into you and remind you of truth because in the Bible says that the spirit is truth. Yes. And I was like so encouraged by that. I was like, thank you so much because like I just needed that reminder and I know that sometimes it can be very difficult to kind of like go through life by yourself and yes. kind of go through things by yourself. Like a lot of these things like jealousy or like things that are from the heart, mm -hmm. um, it can feel very uh, like tough to battle it on your own. But having someone that reminds you of truth, is like the Holy Spirit working in them literally to remind you yes. of what the Holy Spirit wants you to listen to yes. and hear. And that's how you, that's really, really good because that's how we usually hear from God as well. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people say, I want to hear God audibly. I'm sorry to break it to you, but you probably won't. You can. I'm not saying he won't do it. He can speak to you audibly, but the, the chances of him doing that is very slim, you know? And so he usually uses other people. And the word. And the word for him to speak to us. Even a non-believer can speak life into you. But we're so prideful that we neglect people because we think that because I'm more righteous, I'm more of a Christian, why mm -hmm. am I listening to this person? When a non-believer can literally tell you what you need to hear to get out of whatever cycle you're in. Yeah. And so we have to be humble enough to understand that people, you, but God uses people mm -hmm. to deliver his word. And we have to be open enough. The Bible says those who have ears, let them hear. Let them hear, you know, if they're telling you something and they don't even know the word of God, but yet they're aligning themselves to the word of God without them even knowing, that's how you know it's the spirit of God and, and there's, operating. Yeah, and there's also a verse like, be <clears throat> up, like, be careful, you may be entertaining angels. You may be entertaining angels. You Amen. may be entertaining them. So yes. you got to be very, like, discerning. And, and discernment also, I was going to say this earlier, discernment comes from the Lord. Discernment comes from the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, it is so easy for you to fall into this category of the flesh. Yes. Because you can literally start with a little thing, and then this little thing becomes this big thing. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit pretty much stops that <coughs> right there and then and helps you discern, wait, is this the path that I'm supposed to go? Is yes. this what I'm supposed to be watching? Mm -hmm. is, supposed to, like, is this what I'm supposed to be listening right Come now? On. The Holy Spirit is your helper. It's your guide. Yep. And a lot of the times, like you said, we suppress it. We suppress it because we want this thing. Yep. And we're so impatient that we lose sight of the gift of the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit guides us, it's for us to have an abundant life. Yes, bro. And it can be uncomfortable because sometimes the Holy Spirit is telling you to wait. Mm -hmm. And because we're in the flesh, we want it right now. Yeah. Then we get into this thing and this little thing becomes this big thing. And bro. the sin keeps growing and growing and growing. Bro, you're spot on because that happens to me. Like that. Y'all think we exempt? <laughs> because we got a little because, podcast? Because we're on the podcast, y'all think we don't battle through this? Yeah. We're telling you this because we experienced this. I experienced it myself. You know how many times I was disobedient to the voice of God? And I did what I wanted to do? As a matter of fact, that's something that I'm struggling with to this day. And I am so aware of it that I'm cautious of every decision that I do because I myself want to control everything. I want to be in control. I want to be like, no, I'm going to do this now. When we should submit ourselves to God, knowing that God has better plans for us. He says, my ways is better than your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Mm. So stop trying to compare myself to you. God, look at this opportunity. Look at this way. Mm -hmm. This is definitely you. 
bro, when you're not submitted to the to, to God and oh you're not submitted goodness. to the Holy Spirit, bro, that's so good. Trust me, you will be out of time most of the time. And I've been out of time so many times. And I'm there's stuff that I'm still dealing with to this day because of my disobedience. And I'm so aware of that. But I thank God because He did that. Because God says in His Word that He corrects those that He loves. He corrects His children. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I know that He did that because He loves me. He disciplines he, those. Yeah, that he, he loves. disciplines those that He loves. And so He loves me so much to let me know what I did wrong. And yet I'm still growing from it. And I'm still understanding him because God is a, is a God that you're never going to get enough of knowing about him. You're going to know about him every single day. And people be like, oh, when we're in heaven, are we going to get bored in heaven? Bro, do you get bored of living? You know, there's a one thing that if you're battling with depression and stuff like that and you don't want to live anymore. But honestly, as somebody that's just living life, you don't get bored of living. You mm -hmm. wake up, you know, you love life, you go through trials and stuff. But heaven is going to be better because we don't have these struggles. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So we're, we're going to love God because we're constantly learning about him. And so for me. Um, mm. I'm learning so much about that, that yeah. his timing is everything. Yeah. And I, when I hear you say that, the first thing I think about is the universe. It, you know that in science, it says that the galaxy is expanding as we speak. Yes, yes, yes. It just keeps expanding, mm -hmm, expanding, mm -hmm. expanding. And in the galaxy, you have Milky Way. Yep. In the Milky Way, you have like different the planets. Black hole or whatever. You have, uh -huh, and you have stars. And yep. like in each milk Milky Way, supposedly, there's like different, like, like how you call it? Like the solar... Oh, oh, the solar systems? Yeah, like, like <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. But it's pretty much saying, like, the, the universe is expanding as we speak. And I think about it, like, that is how God is. Amen. God is eternal. Yes. He His knowledge and wisdom is everlasting. We will never, fully ever it. fully comprehend him. We will never fully know him because yes. he's God. And we, that's the most beautiful thing about the Lord that, Every single time that I even read my word, like people have read this book over and over again, cover to cover, but somehow they still get new things from it. New revelation every time. But somehow things are are, are lit up in a new and fresh way. Mm -hmm. That's who God is. Amen. Like you will never get bored of God. You won't. And that is just like. Oh, well, uh, it's so beautiful. It's so amazing. And you guys. I think that the reason why when you usually because a lot of people say I'm reading the word but I'm not understanding what I'm reading mm. is usually because you're not when I say use the Holy Spirit I mean by activating him when you're reading the word of God it's stirring not using, him stirring him up yeah, stirring him up or activating your spirit for it to lead you to all truth <coughs> you usually sorry you usually um reading the word in in carnally you're reading it and you're you're not understanding that God speaks in parables, he speaks in ways for us to understand it, um, the deeper meaning of it. When God says, um, if your right hand is caused you to sin, cut it off, for it's better to go to hell, it's better to go to heaven with one hand than hell with two hands. You know, people be like, What God a carnal person will be like, Oh, what kind of whoa, God whoa, is whoa. that? What kind of God is that? I gotta cut my hand? hand off. You know what I'm saying? I gotta plug my eye. I gotta plug my eye out if it's causing me to sin. They won't see deeper. And so somebody with the Holy Spirit will understand, hold on. This That's is a wisdom. spiritual thing. That's a spiritual thing, saying that it is, it is so sin. Sin is so deep to God and so serious to God that basically saying cutting your hand off is like, bro, do whatever you need to do to stop this sin because mm -hmm. hell is eternal and so is heaven. And I want you to go to the right way in the right direction. He's giving us direction. He's giving us wisdom on how to operate these things. And so. Through the Holy Spirit is how you get these revelations. Yes. Through the Holy Spirit is how you understand deeper and deeper about the mysteries of God. And that's what we should all be desiring is to know more about the Lord because we can't be shallow all the way. There's things that we want to learn about God, but yet we're not activating the Holy Spirit to do it. The Holy Spirit is the only one that's going to get us there. Yeah. Us carnally can't do that. Our mind is so limited. But remember, the Holy Spirit is eternal and it will lead us to eternal knowledge which is the things of God. And so utilizing the Holy Spirit when we Bible study is so key, bro. It's so, so key. Like yesterday when I was um, when I was praying, I got so much revelation because I was just talking to God. God, what does this mean? I'm going to be honest, God. I don't know what that means. So what does it mean? And the Lord just downloads things in my mind. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to see. Like I was questioning, God, is this you? Is this in my mind? Let me go search it up. And then you go deeper and deeper. I'm like, I know that was the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I utilized it. I prayed before doing it so the Lord can lead me to all truth. And yeah. that's what us Christians should do is utilize the Holy Spirit for it to speak to us. Yeah. And like the first chapter of Galatians, it was saying like, walk by the spirit, walk, walk by, by the spirit. spirit. Like, yes, bro. like literally like let the spirit lead you. Mm -hmm. And we see it all throughout the Bible in the book of Acts, in all the gospels, all throughout the Bible. Cause yeah. I think it was like 
is it you guys can correct me in the comments but i think it's like 70 percent or like 60 percent of the new testament was written by paul a big chunk was written yeah, by yeah, paul yeah. and we see that he was always walking by the spirit mm -hmm. always he was drenched and people always say like you know, how can I feel the Lord? Like, how can I be in his presence? Because there are different seasons of life. Like if you're mm -hmm. a student, if you are a mom, if you are someone that's busy and you don't have um, a certain time to have your Bible studies, like very glamorized, your Bible in the morning, so mm -hmm. a cup of coffee, yeah. you woke up extra early. Like sometimes that's not realistic. So how can we be drenched by the spirit? How can we literally live our lives as testimonies of the Lord and of the spirit? How can we let the spirit literally like stir up in us where we don't need to have a certain time to be in, in like a quiet time to feel the Lord. We can feel the Lord throughout our day. And that means it's just constantly stirring up the spirit. Yes. Constantly communicate with the, with the Lord and letting the Holy Spirit convict you about certain things. There's this one moment that is so funny. I told Rudy about this, but we were having an argument once mm -hmm. and I was having a full conversation with the spirit. I was like, Holy <laughs> Spirit, I'm going to say this. Like, I'm going to say this isn't that. And the, spirit, and the Holy Spirit was telling me like, no, don't say this. Yep. And I bite my tongue. I'm like, listening to him. And then right after, he tells me what I needed to hear. Wow. And I'm like, thank you, Holy Spirit. Because if I said something, it would have made it worse. It would have made it worse. God so even in situations been. like that where you feel like it's silly to like talk to the Holy Spirit about, like literally the best times speak to, to him because he will guide you in every single thing, like in conversations with your spouse, in moments that you have to make a decision, in things that mm -hmm. are literally regular day and, and, and regular life. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. Yes. He wants to it, be incorporated in the little. Right. Be faithful with the little and you'll be faithful with much. That's the same thing. This this evens out as well. If you're faithful with just regular conversations with incorporating the Holy Spirit, when you have big decisions to to, to make, you're going to be so filled with the Holy Spirit that you're going to know what decisions to make because you're flowing in the Spirit. With the little you were faithful, with the little arguments you were faithful, now when you have a big decision to make, the Holy Spirit will lead you to all truth. So these things are you know, practices that we can make for us to walk in the spirit. The Bible says this, and it's a little bit up from what you were reading. I think it's in Galatians, but it says um, here, where is it? Uh, Galatians, what? Something 16, Galatians 5, 16. It says this, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Mm. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things I want, the things you want to do. Mm. But if you are led by the Holy Spirit, you are not under the law. So, in the, the verse that you read goes afterwards. Walk in the Spirit, you won't gratify the, the, the desires of the flesh. Walking by the Spirit is actively moving in every direction that you make, every decision that you make, you're incorporating God. And so when you fill yourself up with the Spirit of God, every single day through prayer, through decision making, through speech, you start amplifying that Holy Spirit and you start walking in it, bro. It is not just, I have the Holy Spirit, so, um, you know, things will just come. No, the way that you grow faith, the way that you grow in your faith and the way that you grow spiritually is through certain situations and circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's how you grow. Mm -hmm. People think that you grow because you keep reading the Bible. That's not how you grow. That's a way for you to grow in your faith and knowledge and understanding, but you grow in your faith because of situations and how you handle those situations, how you react to those situations is how you will be elevated in the, in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. People don't know that. People think that, um, you know, I'm amplified based on how much I fast in these things. And these things are good. These things are good. But your character is truly tested when situations come about. How would you respond? The fruits of the spirits is gentleness, you know, self-control, all of these things. When you have that eagerness in you to lust, to watch pornography, to do these things, how would you answer? And it all depends on how filled you are with the spirit to answer the right way. Because if you're not filled with the spirit, you will satisfy, you will satisfy the desires of the flesh. Yeah, in the same tone, I was going to say that people really want the fruit of the Spirit, which I'm going to read it right now. Mm -hmm. People really desire to have these amazing qualities about themselves. But how do you actually have the qualities? Is when God puts you in situations to exercise it, that is how you really like bring those, those fruits to life. Amen. Because we see people in the church for like 10 years and they don't have the fruit of the Spirit. Yep. And you see people that <clears throat> have gone to church for like three years and you see them full of the Spirit. Yep full of the fruits and they're yeah. literally exuding that because it is not about the time mm -hmm. it's about literally like 
You're being faithful. put in situations mm-hmm. where you have to exercise it and you actually do. Yes. You actually tap you it act into with the, obedience. You yes. act with obedience and you actually tap into the Holy Spirit to get better. And when you're come near on. the Lord, when you draw closer to God, those things are going to come out. Yes. Because you are the person that, Father, that's what the saying say. It's like, um, you are who you're closest to. Yeah, you, you are. You are who you're you closest to. With. Yeah. That saying is so true because if you're not with the Lord a lot, you will look like him. Of course, dude. You will look like him. So um, I think that this, what I'm going to read right now, it is the fruit of the spirit. And I want all of us mm-hmm. to do a check-in, okay, <coughs> and say, Am I actually exuding these things? Am I looking like this? And if you're, if you are, amen, good job, keep doing it. <laughs> and if you aren't, I, I challenge you to bring it to the Lord and ask him to help you in this area. Amen. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, <coughs> peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, gentleness. and self-control. The law is not against such things. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh yes. with his passions and desires. Oh, my goodness, Jesus. I if we live. live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Do you grasp that? Can you read that last from that last I'm part? not even done yet. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. I just had a, I just had to take a second. That was a lot to unpack. That was a lot. Bro, that's so Let good. us not become conceited, oh my goodness. provoking one another and envying one another. Oh my goodness. So should I read the Go whole back. thing again? Read the whole thing again. But the fruit of the spirit is mm-hmm. love, joy, patience, peace, I'm working on patience, kindness, y'all. goodness, <laughs> faithfulness, mm-hmm. gentleness. Yes. That's yeah. A, yeah, because you be like screaming at me for I no know, reason. I know. Yeah, you gotta work on that. Okay. Um, and self-control. <laughs> okay. The law is not against such things. Uh-huh. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Okay, stop right there before we keep going any deeper. Read that one more time. Those Go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper. If we live by the Spirit, mm-hmm. that's a big thing there. If. 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 So this comes to those who <coughs> do these things, okay? This is optional. If if you live because I'm telling you, you can have the Holy Spirit. You can. You can, but you if have you to live choose. in it. Mm-hmm. You live in it. If you if we live by the Spirit, <sighs> let us also keep in step with the Spirit. I think the one you wanted to read the was the before. Part. Yeah. Yes. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with their passions and desires. With its passions. With its passions and desires. And desires. We, Imano, has desires. I have a lot of passions. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of things that I want to do. Right. But when you're crucified with Christ, all that dies away. Ooh. All of that dies away. And that's something that I battle very hard with because I have a lot of goals and aspirations and things that I want to do in life. But again, I, I, I. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives through me. So if I crucify my flesh with God, I have to be obedient and submissive to the will of God. And a lot of people battle with that because a lot of people want to do what they want to do and what seems right to them. That's convicting. That's convicting. But it is not about us anymore because that's already crucified. Mm -hmm. And if somebody says he's a Christian, but they say that I'm doing what I want to do, I'm doing my will. I'm following my heart. I'm following my heart. They haven't crucified their flesh yet. Mm -hmm. They haven't died to Christ. They look apart, but they aren't apart. Right. Because a true believer, what it does is, I no longer live. I'm submitted to God. And what things that I want to do no longer live, no longer reside, is what God wants me to do. And so if God wants me to lay my whole life down, give away this, move over there, I'm going to do it because that's who I am. Now my identity is in Christ, not in myself. So a lot of us need to understand that we have a lot of passions, a lot of desires, Mm -hmm. you know? But... The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things. So check those desires and make sure that they're aligning to God. Because if they're your desires and they're not God's desire, it will lead you to a path that you shouldn't be in. Yeah. And in the Bible says that Jesus. we have to pick up our cross. Daily. We have to pick up our cross daily. These Come are on. things that we have to do daily because I'm sure that this list of the flesh, mm-hmm. sexual immorality, moral impurity, idolatry, yep. strife. 
hatred, jealousy, <laughs> anger, yeah. outbursts. It says here, outbursts of anger. That's, that's an very, that's very, anger. that's very detailed. It's like when something happens and you like slash out. Yeah. And you have no self control. That's lack of self control. That's lack of self control. But like everything that it says here about the flesh is saying that we have to crucify the flesh yes. with its passions and desires. And these are things that we have to do daily. Yes. These are things as believers we have to bring to the Lord daily. We have to literally give it to God daily, daily so we can become holy and sanctified like him. These are not easy things. These yes. are very difficult things. Yes. Literally trying to be loving and kind and, and self-control and mm -hmm. gentle when you're literally annoying. Okay. All right. Well, it it is hard. Now. You were just flowing and now it I just caught hard. it straight. Like, you but, know what I'm saying? But... You know, the Lord calls us higher. He's literally calling us higher here. Bro, yes. And not only is he calling us higher, but he's also saying, listen, I want you to be like this, but I'm not expecting you to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. I'm not expecting you to do it in your own power, in your own will, because we know that you're going to fall short. Amen. So you have to follow me because I'm perfect. And yes, and that's why it says that we must live by the spirit because mm -hmm. everything that was that was um, um, laid listed. out, listed, it's everything that's an action of the flesh. All of it was an action of the flesh. As humans, if somebody cuts us off, we're quick to be like, why do you cut and curse them out? Yeah. As humans, it's quick. If you if you trying to teach you something, which I do a lot, I'm trying to tell her something and I lose my patience. What? I'm gonna be honest. That's why I said I was struggling what? with it. Because I need to be more patient. Sometimes when you're now. talking to somebody, I'm not gonna say specifically you. Sometimes you do make the outburst, you know? But it, it, it you know, it's, it's a brother and sister love. But I'm saying in general, when you don't have self-control, where it's uncontrollable, where it's now to a point where it's like, whoa, relax. I don't want to relax. Like, you're just in a place where it's like, whoa. It's like hatred. Hatred. You have officially suppressed the the, the Holy Spirit and are walking in your flesh. Mm -hmm. Because if you're so filled with the Spirit, although you may act upon it right away, it will check you. Because mm -hmm. don't, don't get me wrong. You will probably slip up and be like... Bro, but what do you mean? And then you get instantly convicted and backtrack right away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what it is to be filled with the Spirit. Even when you get even more filled with the Spirit, it, will, it won't even come out. It will be right here. And you're like, hold on. Like you. Mm -hmm. When you were, you know, talking to Rudy. And you're like, let me wait. Because yeah. I can say something right now. Let me wait. And then boom. That's, that's submitting to the Spirit of God in all situations. And that's what Christians need to understand. That if you have in these things... Don't look at yourself as God doesn't love me. I have no way out. No, no, no. Self-reflect, bro. There's no more condemnation for those who are in Christ. Mm -hmm. So don't forget that. You know, don't forget that you're still loved and God still loves you and he wants the best for you. And that's why you're probably even watching this right now. It's because he wants you to change. But you have to look internally and say, God, what am I struggling with? And how can I change it to be more submissive to the Holy Spirit and not my flesh? Because when you crucify your desires, when you crucify your flesh, these actions won't be a thing. I forgot the last time, like, I did certain things, like, you know, blatantly just started cursing crazily and all yeah. these things that people struggle with consistently. It's because the Holy Spirit resides in you, and these things don't just happen, you know? Like, I, I don't know, like, there's some Christians out there that just feel so comfortable to just F this and F that. And, and, and it just shows where you at spiritually, bro. You know, we love them. God is still using them. But, bro, as a man of God, as a woman of God, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, no foul language comes out of your mouth. You get what I'm saying? Not trying to connect with them because you're trying to connect. None of that happens because you're so filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't try to be like the world. You bring the world to try to be like Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. We present them to Christ and let the changing happen. We don't stoop down. We stoop up. And so that's what it is to be filled with the Holy Spirit and crucifying your flesh fully. Yeah, I definitely challenge you guys to read the book of Acts because honestly, the book of Acts wrecked me in a way mm. that I definitely felt extremely convicted. And I was like, wow, like how faithful and devoted these people were. Like they literally mm. didn't care about nothing. All they cared about was bringing the word. And that meant that they had to get killed. <clears throat> Um, they had to get sacrificed. Bro. Um, they were stoned to death, some of them. Um, they were thrown in jail. They were literally going through so much because they were defending a gospel, and it didn't matter what the world said or what the world did. They were here for a mission, and we are to model that. Yes. Right? We are to model that. We have to be fierce with the word of God. And 
um, in the book of Acts, it is so interesting because I love how they follow the the, the ministry of Paul. Hmm. And a lot of the times when I was reading the book of Acts, I kept reading. Paul was filled with the spirit, like I was saying earlier. He was filled mm-hmm. with the spirit to speak about this. He was filled with the spirit. Yes. He was empowered by the spirit to speak boldly to this high person in the in the in the um society, right? Yes. Like he was always empowered by the Holy Spirit. There were moments that I generally questioned, like, was he afraid in this moment? Because that <coughs> was worthy to be afraid. But Paul was so fearless because of the Holy Spirit. And we mm-hmm. can be like that too. Trust yes. me. It is not easy to be exposed to a big audience of people that, you know, that they might not like Jesus, Amen. that they might not like the Lord, and you might get hatred, yep. right? It is not easy for that college student to speak up to that professor because he's saying to speak against the Jesus and the Lord, what they believe. right? It is not easy to stand up in a conversation where somebody's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. It is not easy. But we're not meant to do easy things, come right? On, on, we're meant on. to follow the Lord. We're meant to protect this gospel because of what he did on the cross, literally everything that we do is out of gratefulness. Literally, we're yes. saved because of his grace. We're saved because of his sacrifice. Literally, like, the least thing that we can do is to be fearless about this gospel. Mm-hmm. And not only are we fearless because of love, because we love Jesus so much, but we're fearless because we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Because... He's so gracious enough that he gives us the Holy Spirit. <coughs> he gives us the word. Yes. He gives us so much wisdom and power to be able to face these things in this world. Exactly. And I want you guys to really take that <clears throat> on because honestly, life is not easy. Life is hard, but life is beautiful with Jesus Come on. because we have hope. Like we literally don't think about this world being the end or be all. We know that there's an eternity out there and everything that we do is eternal. Yeah. We have an internal mindset. Um, I just wanted to share that because I felt that in my spirit. But I wanted to bring you guys to the book of Acts in chapter 1 Amen. in verse 8. I would love for you to ex- uh, talk about this because I think that you really have to say something about this. So it says here, but you will receive power. Mm-hmm. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and all Samaria, and to the end of the earth. God is saying that when you have the Holy Spirit, you have power. Amen. You have power. And I feel like we have to exercise that power. Come on. Literally in the next chapter, it talks about how the the day of the Pentecost, Mm -hmm. where they were all in the upper room and then the Holy Spirit descended and they were speaking in tongues and were prophesying. Yes. That is power. Literally something that is like Mm -hmm. heavenly. Yes. And a lot of people don't tap into that power because sometimes like, I'm going to be honest, I feel like in American Christianity, we've been conditioned to just go to church every Sunday Mm -hmm. and, you know, read the word and be good people, but not tap into the power of deliverance, of prophesying, Mm -hmm. of, of, of healing. Yep. Um, and there is power because we see that all throughout the gospels in the the Bible. There was, Jesus was literally healing people and he was casting out (laughs) demons and he was doing all these amazing things. That is still real in this society like it's still real in this age like that's not the care (laughs) well (laughs) that is not only back then that's still real now exactly and that's what people need to understand that when the holy spirit resides in you that you receive power Mm. you receive power people don't understand that when you have the holy spirit and this is why they don't act upon this power that they have jesus said greater things you will do than i when i leave Mm -hmm. jesus raised people from the dead he did a lot of great things so what is this great thing that he's talking about We'll be out. We'll be reached um, to to different nations. We'll be reached to other people. They, Jesus didn't have a platform like we do. We're reaching thousands of people through a camera right now, which is so powerful. Um, but understand that when you receive power, you can pray for somebody and they will be delivered. Amen. They will be set free. Mm-hmm. Deliverance, prophecy, healing. These things are evidence of the power that resides in you through the Holy Spirit. Amen. People need to start tapping into these things and not be scared and not be shy. But again. If you're not walking in a consecrated life through Christ, it will, it will be a struggle for you to have faith to do it. Because usually when you pray for somebody, it's usually your faith that is the reason why it doesn't happen. Oof. God will always come through. The Bible says to have faith as small as a mustard seed. If you have faith enough to believe that they will be healed, they will be healed, bro. Deliverance will come. If you pray for somebody... That demon must be must flee in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. And as Christians, we need to walk in that power. The Bible says that we have dominion over the earth, bro. Get what I'm saying? 
Why are you not walking in that authority? Why are you not walking in that power? When we were in LA, um, it was it was it was bad because it was raining almost all the days. And I remember we were leaving Thursday and I Wednesday was the only day that was it was raining first. It showed that it was raining. And we were like, yo, all we want is just that one day. Uh, can I give him context? <coughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry to call him off. I'm sorry to call him off. <laughs> I'm sorry to call you off. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. No, but I want to give him context so they can know the gravity of things. Okay, okay. So we <clears> booked <throat> a flight to LA yes. for this one purpose. And it's to do this shoot, right? All of a sudden, we go to LA. Why? Because it's always sunny there. Mm-hmm. It's always nice there. And it is winter time. So it is pretty cold where we live. Yes. So we booked this flight. We get to LA. All of a sudden, there is a rainstorm mm-hmm. in LA where it literally never rains. Never rains. And we're like, dang, we're here for only three days. Mm-hmm. We spent so much money to be here and do yeah. this thing. I was getting discouraged. We, there was course. a point where I was like, wait a minute. Like, come on, Lord. Like, you got to come through for us. And then this moment happened. Yeah. And that's a natural instinct. I don't care who you are. Like, uh, you can be the most powerful man of God. It's a natural instinct for you to look at the circumstances you should be like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, man. And have that moment of just like, you know, Bible says it like. Disappointment. More, disappointment. More with those that are mourning. Like, there's a season and a time for everything. So mm-hmm. that's a natural instinct. And so I saw that and I was like, my God is greater than that. And I believe it. And I know that if I pray to him and I ask him to reverse that day and give a son for us to do this amazing shoot for Tiny. Um, he would do it. <laughs> and I had so much faith in me and I kept saying, and obviously, bro, like since you made so much money, like you were like, yo, like, bro, come on. Like you were a little down for a little bit, for a little bit, temporary, because mm-hmm. you were good afterwards. Um, and then when the moment she was down, I was like, yo, t- I'm telling you, our God is greater. He can do it. And with faith, he will reverse that day. You guys will not believe. He reversed the day. <laughs> On Wednesday was the only day out of the week that was sunny. It was actually really sunny. It was actually really nice. It was nice. beautiful. The video came out amazing. I'm pretty sure you saw it already. Beautiful day. It was a beautiful but day. But you know what's funny? It was beautiful during <clears throat> the day, but then it started raining at night. And then it started raining at night. So and Galileo was like, let bro, me give him this let time. Let me give him this time. You're not going to tell me my God cannot move. And mm-hmm. so these things, I love God so much because he does these things. And again, LA is always sunny. Yeah. So I feel like God did that just for us to exercise our faith. That's it. I feel like we Literally. just learned something from that because now... Um, I'm so I'm even more cautious about how I speak and oh, the words, words that come forth words. because I can reap a life. Life and death comes to the power of the tongue. So I'm so cautious about what I say. And so knowing that my God came through is a way for me to exercise my faith and know that I have dominion, I have power. And if I ask, the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Knock and the door shall be open to you, mm-hmm. says the word of God. Mm-hmm. And so when I, when I did that, it showed that, bro, so how much more can we do in Christ? That's something so small, but how much more people can be delivered? How much yeah. more people are walking in power, oh, laying hands and setting the captives free? Yes. You that are watching this can do that. You that are watching this can heal your mother that's sick. You have the power that's residing in you through the Holy Spirit to help them come into full recovery, mm-hmm. bro. But you have to have faith because when you have faith in your end, God will always come through in his end. God will never fail. He will never fail. And we're not saying <laughs> that, you know, don't believe in the doctors. Or, like, if you have mental health issues, don't go to a therapist. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. God uses those people for the healing of mm-hmm. others, right? We're not against any of that. But also, resort to God first. Amen. Resort to Jesus first. Resort to hitting your knees and pleading with the Lord yeah. for that person's salvation, for that person to be healed from that sickness, from you to be delivered from anxiety and Amen. depression. Literally, l- cast it out of yourself. Yeah. Say, God... Help me, clean me, Lord. You can do the impossible because he can do the impossible. So mm-hmm. having that faith, and like Imano said, it can be as small as a master seed. God will move. He will. God will move. But now, how is your faith? Amen. How is your trust? Are you trusting in the Lord? Are you devoting time to walk in the Spirit? Are you filled with the Spirit? Yep. There's so much power in our words. Mm-hmm. There's so much power in how we devote our time that... It is so evident when you're walking with the spirit. It is so evident in your life because literally the way that you speak, the way that you act, Mm -hmm. everything just exudes that. The fruit of the spirit is exuding that. So let's spend more time with the Lord. Let's be close to the Lord because when you are close to him, he will show himself through you to others. Yes. So I, 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 um, I challenge you. I challenge you to plead with God. Plead with him. If you're desiring these things because I got to understand that he will not give you something that you cannot handle, mm-hmm. okay? So if you're like, I want to I wanna prophesy and I want to heal the sick and I want to raise the dead, it takes steps to get there. 
because of how your faith is now and where your walk with God is right now. And so everything is seasonal. If you're desiring these things, keep desiring them. Mm -hmm. But take actionable steps to be able to walk in that authority. Because God does not give um, a certain position to somebody that is not equipped to be in that position. In the military, they won't be put you as chief if you, you haven't even been a soldier. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So there's ranks, and God is a God of order. He has ranks. He has position for everyone. And so if you're desiring to level up, you know, you have to work. And in the sense of working is you have to put in your part, bro. Mm -hmm. You have to generally deny your flesh daily. Deny your desires. Mm -hmm. You know, fall in your face fast. It's work. You know, it's submit work. your flesh to the spirit of God to walk in the spirit for you to be able to act upon these gifts when the time comes. Yeah. And so I've been desiring God to elevate me so much. And I have to sacrifice so much of my time, so much of my comfort, so many things that I want to do. Because I say, God, I want to be used this way, mm -hmm. so I'm going to do my part, and you will always do yours, mm -hmm. and he has, mm -hmm. and he still keeps doing it. Oh, and I'm so glad about the so results good. that he's I'm so getting good. because of my sacrifices. You get what I'm saying? And my obedience. That's the key one, my obedience. Mm -hmm. Not only sacrifices, but obedience to him. Because the Bible says obedience is greater than sacrifice. So when you're obedient to him and sacrificing things that, that you desire to do, God will elevate you in the spirit, bro. God will elevate you in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And when you start walking in faith to the things that you want to do, you're like, yo, I want to pray for this, man. I feel led to pray for this, man. Go. Do it. Just do it in faith, knowing that the Holy Spirit is the one doing it for you and not yourself. Don't think about it too much. You just do it in faith. God, I cast out this demon in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. There's an authority that you hold. There's an authority that you hold, and you need to understand that that authority you have it because of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In not, Jesus' name. Not, in not, name. In name. Not, not in Imano's name. Not in Imano's name. Not in my strength. Mm -mm. In Jesus' name. And they mm -hmm. must obey. They must submit to that name. That name holds power. That name Demons is Demons flee in the name of Jesus. They flee in the name of mm -hmm. Jesus. So when you go with the mindset of, I'm not doing this. I'm just a vessel of the Holy Spirit. Through the name of Jesus that is doing this. You will have such a different perspective in healing and power mm -hmm. and in all of these things because you know that it's not you, but it's the faith that's in you that's driving you to do that because yeah. you have faith in Christ alone and not in your own strength. Again, submitting, dying to your desires, dying to your flesh, dying to your mindset, renewing your mind. These things will literally put you in a position spiritually that God can use you because it's no longer you that resides. It's, it's just the fullness of God flowing through you. And it's so powerful, bro. Mm -hmm. And you will see wonders in your life. When you let the Holy Spirit operate fully. And we are so <coughs> eager and we're so hungry to be strong mm -hmm. physically. We want to go to the gym. We want to look good, right? Yep. But why aren't we desiring the same thing to be strong in oh the goodness. spirit? Why aren't we being literally giants in the spirit? Because honestly, this is a spiritual walk and this is a spiritual life. And a lot of the things that we encounter and we go through are spiritual. So how strong are you in the spirit? You can be strong and a bodybuilder in real life, but if you cannot hold the prayer, if you cannot pray for other people, if you cannot pray for yourself, if you have no type of spiritual life, you are a little, a little body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're a little body in the spirit. You have no authority. No authority in the spirit. Bro. So let's desire to be giants in the Come spirit. On. No, you just you have a verse for that? verse. Yeah, it's in 1 <laughs> Timothy 4.8. 1 Timothy 4.8. I, I don't want to paraphrase. I want to read it. Yeah, I'm going to get it for you. Where is your physical Bible, by the way? Bro, I I don't got it in me. Yeah, y I got you. Hey, there. starting off the season with not the word of God. I got you saved. there, buddy. Mm -hmm. For body, for bodily exercise, profit is little, but the godliness is profited unto all things, having promise of of the life that is now and the wish to come. AKA saying this: physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding mm. promises for the present life Woo. and the life to come. Exercising. I'll be honest. I go to the gym every single day. I love going to the gym. But the profits is little. It profits something. Literally don't it matter. profits is something. Yeah, to the point where you literally are sick and you still go. Okay. But it profits is something. But it doesn't profit enough if you're not exercising your spiritual mm -hmm. life. Because your spiritual life will profit here and it will be profit of you in the next life to come. Right. Again, death is not dying. Death is just transition. Transition to what's next. Okay? So when you die, it's a starting point of whatever you decide based on what you did in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Understand that. So don't look at death as something scary. Look at death as a transition. And so a uh, 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 spiritual exercise is what profits here and it profits you in, in, in the long run, yeah. in, the, in, in, in the after after um your physical death. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important, bro, mm -hmm. that we exercise our, our, our spiritual life 
And again, little things like that. God, I know you're going to reverse that day. In Jesus' name, I'm saying it with faith because I know you're going to do it. But believe mm -hmm. in it, bro, because you know that the God that you're serving is the God of the universe. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is who you're serving. So he can do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you when you exercise your faith in this manner, you're going to start seeing changes. You're going to start seeing shifts. But it starts with your prayer life. It starts with your prayer life, bro. It starts with that prayer life. It starts you talking to God constantly. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. You have to pray for everything and anything. For the little things. For the little things. And once you start exercising, that's what it means to exercise. When you start exercising that, you will start seeing an amplification in your spiritual life. And you will start seeing the Holy Spirit manifest <coughs> in your life. You will start Amen. seeing fruits <coughs> of the Spirit. You will start being tangible about the Spirit. You're going to start listening to the Holy Spirit. You're going to be able to see the Holy Spirit in everything. Yes. When you start doing that, you're going to be able to be tangible to the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. And you know the saying that was like, um, you will never regret a workout? Like, you never regret a workout. No matter what happens, mm -hmm. like whatever how you're feeling, you never yeah, regret yeah. it. You will never you regret, will never Come on. regret reading the Bible. You will never regret praying. You Come will on. never regret worshiping the Lord. Yep. I'm telling you right now, the way that I notice a difference when I don't spend time with God is mm -hmm. actually astonishing. Like, I'm literally flabbergasted. Yep. I'm like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Like, God, I didn't spend time with you today, and I was so easily angered. Yep. I was so easily frustrated. I was so easily triggered. I was so easily, like, just like... Empty. Empty. And when I spend time with the Lord daily, it's a daily thing. I am just so full of the spirit. I'm just like, I'm at peace. No matter I'm what happens, peace. it's fine. <laughs> I was having a moment the other day and um, it really meant a lot to me because I was really sad about something. And my husband prayed for me. <clears throat> I think I told you this. Yeah. And powerful. I was like, powerful. oh my gosh, like I feel so much better. This is what I needed. Literally started crying. I'm like, this is exactly what I needed. I was literally mm -hmm. talking about this thing. I was venting to him. I'm like, baby. Blah, blah. And then he literally prayed for me. And I was like, oh my gosh. I slept like a baby. Mm -hmm. All I needed was a reminder. I needed a prayer. I needed, I needed to be reminded of the Lord because the Lord mm -hmm. is my ultimate comfort. And the Holy Spirit is my ultimate safe haven and, and place. And what a beautiful thing that we have access to the Holy Spirit. Little old us. Like, we literally are nobodies. We're literally nobodies, bro. And we don't deserve that love. But look at us. God is so good. But look at us. We're, we're nobodies. And yet he sees us worthy. Yet he looks at us and he sees us so precious. He loves us so much. Like, you know, because there's a time, I think Job said in one, and I, I forgot, because I was reading Job, and he said, um, God, what do you know what this is like? You don't know what it's like to be a human. You don't know this feeling. And so, you know, you're letting these things happen, but you don't understand. Little did he know that God already had a plan of bringing mm. Jesus and manifesting himself to oh. be just like us, to be and feel wow. just like us. Yeah, and it, it's so powerful when I read that because I'm like, that's the correlation of why God did what he had to do so we don't have no excuse because Jesus experienced exactly what we experienced. And so he, he, he was whipped. He was, he was, you know, it was embarrassing. Betrayed. He on. was betrayed. He was ashamed. They shamed him in front mm -hmm. of everybody. Well, he didn't deserve it. But he didn't deserve it. And he was looking at us and saying, you're worthy. You're worthy for this. Like, bro, when I think oh about that, gosh. it just fills my heart with so much gratitude. And it makes me feel so grateful. And it just makes me understand that this life that I chose of fi fully sacrificing my life for Jesus was the best decision that I've ever made. Mm -hmm. Because I know that this purpose in what I'm doing, every breath that I take is purposeful. And a lot of people live their life with no meaning. And the Holy Spirit just reminds me every single time that you do have meaning because you're living for me. You know what I'm saying? And it's such a humbling experience. It's truly a, a blessing experience to be able to experience God in our everyday life, in our everyday uh, going and, and coming. And just our everyday aspect, we can talk to him, we can feel him, and we can interact with the Holy Spirit. There's nothing that gets more of a blessing than that. And it humbles me. It really humbles me. And that I feel so gratitude, beautiful. bro. That is so beautiful. <clears throat> Literally, like the thought where when Jesus was on the cross and he was thinking, I'm Please. doing this for Imano. Bro, like, you just, like, I'm, like, oh I'm doing goodness. this for Melody. I'm doing this for you. Bro, like, and, literally insert your name. Like, I'm doing this for. Yeah. Like, he's literally think He was thinking about you in that moment. He's like, yo, I love them so much. And I do not want them to not have a chance to spend eternity with me. So I'm going to go ahead and take their place. I'm going to take everything. all the sins of the world upon myself so they can be saved. And this is a way What a gift. You should think about this when you're about to fall into sin, when you're about to, when something is marinating in your thoughts. I always says to hold down every thought that, that, that goes, that exalts above the thoughts of Christ. Cast it down. So if you're not able to cast it down, but it's lingering, think about, yo, Jesus died for this. Mm -hmm. He died for this exact thing that I'm about to do. How am I going to react? Bro, it humbles you. It grounds you right away. Like, nah, I can't. 
I love him too much. Holy fear. That's that's, that's holy, holy fear, fear right there. It's the holy fear when you're like, I just love God too much. I can't do this. Mm-hmm. No matter how I feel, I know that five minutes from now, I'm going to feel terrible after I did this. Oof. It's humbling. It's humbling. It's humbling. And that's what we need the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will give us that little thought, that little, that little, yo, you shouldn't do this. You that exit do this. door. That exit door is the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. It's the Holy Spirit. So let's amplify our Holy Spirit in us wow. so we can walk in him and have an exit door mm-hmm. in our everyday life. Wow, that was <clears> so <throat> beautiful. I really hope that this episode blessed you guys. Because that, was, that was a powerful episode. That was. I loved it. Oh, my goodness. I loved it so I'm much. I'm watching this back. I'm watching this back. I don't watch our episodes back. I'm going to be honest. I'm just saying the truth. Are we going to be truthful or not? That's crazy. I don't watch it Imagine back, like being the host of a podcast <laughs> and literally no, 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 hating I, your I own do. podcast. I sometimes skip over your part. I skip over your part because I... Listen, Iman, no, that's so mean. I skip it sometimes because I, I want to study how I speak. I want to study. But you can use this into your sister. Nah, sometimes. If we're being Anyways, honest, being I really, really hope this episode um, best you on. guys. Okay, okay, we're about to end, end, end. We have to end. But um, Akiba. if you if you didn't see, little sister over here is having a tiny. Ah. That's so powerful. Like, what? They're about to see this and and they already saw the video on this year. Yeah. They already saw the pictures. Mm-hmm. They saw everything. Yeah. A uh, tiny is coming. Tiny's gonna be right here preaching with us, casting tiny out demons. Tiny is not gonna be here preaching yet <coughs> because it's gonna take a what? little longer. What? But I'm pretty sure that when what? the baby is born, I'm gonna what? have the baby here Tiny's gonna taking a nap. Up. Can I see your Bible? Tiny's gonna come out the womb like this. Repent. <laughs> come out like this. Repent. <laughs> Amigo. Escucha. Escucha. Escucha, muchacho. Yeah, <laughs> cool. <laughs> no, yeah, guys, I am pregnant. I am, we're gonna have a heavenly bond baby. That yeah, is so exciting. Literally, a testimony from the Lord. Like we're so blessed and so joyful. And I'm not gonna say too much because next episode. It's the next episode. That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. we're gonna go back to LA. We're go, yeah, we're going back to. LA. And we're gonna tell you all the details, all the ins and outs. So just literally subscribe if you're new here. Subscribe to our channel. You guys can also listen to our podcast on Spotify yes. and iTunes. Literally, like your ratings and your well, reviews. They they really matter. Like, we're trying to get people to listen to this so they yeah. can listen to the Word of God unfiltered how we are. Yes. Bro. Um. I really hope that you guys can take a moment to, like, give us a review because it will really, really, it will really, really mean a lot to us. We don't even ask for a lot, but that's just, like, that's Please. what they were asking like, for. Like, we actually begging just show us love there. Like, mm-hmm. you know, download our podcast and stuff because we want to reach more people. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that, those little downloads and stuff go a They long really way. matter. Like, each one. Don't think, like, oh, one is not going to matter. You literally, yours matter. Yes. So we really hope that you guys can support us on there. And I really, like I said before, mm-hmm. I really hope that this podcast blessed you guys. <coughs> and comment below for Imola to get better. Okay, that was weird. We have Why to open a door like or that? something. Production. What did you say? Like open that? the window. Production. No. This is just insane. Um, and also one last thing. Um, we don't talk about this, but there's a form of giving you can give through oh, yeah. um the links down below. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want you guys to understand that this is a giving where number one, we want you to pray and see what the Lord tells you to give. Um, we want you to do it out of a prayerful heart, not of a impulsive decision. We want you to pray, and whatever the Lord tells you, do that. Five dollars, mm-hmm. two dollars, it doesn't matter. Whatever the Lord tells you, give it. Because um, not only do we have so much that we want to do, there's a lot of projects that we have lined up, and we're gonna show you guys where your your funding is going to. Mm-hmm. We have things that we have lined up. It's gonna be costly, but it's gonna be so powerful because you're gonna see where your giving is going to. Yeah. This is what we love. Because you you know, when I give to somebody or when I give anywhere, I wanna see where my money's going to. Yeah. Respectfully. And it's just a hint, it's gonna go to helping others helping in the third world country. Yes. We can't talk about it too much yet, but your money's going to somewhere that is going to be powerful. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so if you feel led to give, please pray and let the Holy Spirit, mm, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, uh, you know take you to whatever you want to give so amen we love yeah. you guys so thank you guys so much for watching we ab- we missed you guys bro, we missed you bro this is like the longest we ever nah, took a th- break like this is this absolutely no yeah this is on un- no more breaks no. ever ever okay relax no i'm serious no like, you see yeah like, i'm down for no more breaks she's not no like maybe a week or two between nah. seasons not a month we did a month no breaks. yeah it was a lot <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> oh my goodness we, uh, <laughs> we love you guys and we'll see you on the oh next my goodness, episode this is so terrible <laughs> See you guys. God bless you. Goodbye.